Are we seeing straight? The familiar contours of the Seat Ibiza? But how come it has a station wagon rear? Because it is a station wagon, and its name is ST, the Seat Ibiza ST, and it can certainly swallow plenty of cargo. This is a completely new segment that is set to grow to 100 or 150,000 cars in Germany, says Wolf Dielenschneider. And of course, the car maker wants its share of the pie. The ST is the third body variant of the Ibiza, following the three and five door versions. It's 18 centimeters longer than the five door Ibiza. tested one of the top engine versions, a diesel boasting 105 horsepower. This version has a top speed of 188 kilometers an hour and makes the dash from 0 to 100 in 10.9 seconds. Fuel consumption is officially 4.2 liters for 100 kilometers. The sporty suspension gives you sound contact to the road and makes driving a real delight. What makes the ST special, says Dylan Schneider, is the notchback, and it has the biggest cargo area in its class. He also highlights the emotional appeal, especially in the private segment. He particularly has in mind young people who can afford this car and can indulge their sport-oriented mentality. The ST's cargo volume trumps that of its rivals, starting with a basic 430 liters. With the seats folded down, that figure increases to over 1,100 liters of space. But it's not just sporty youngsters that Seat is targeting with the ST. Dylan Schneider from Seat says it's not just individuals, but corporate customers, where the company believes it will be popular, especially for young fleets. Essentially, Seat has bulk business customers on the one hand, while also focusing on private buyers, where Seat has a 3% market share in Germany. Station wagons are all the rage in Germany, and now there's a new kid on the block. Prices for the entry version start at 12,290 euros. And over at Volkswagen, all that will buy you is a basic no frills polo. When you're in the city, it's nice to be independently mobile. But the latest car registration figures show that young city dwellers are becoming disinclined to own their own car. Peugeot was offering them an all-new mobility concept instead. Mu is completely new, says Peugeot's Alexander Seidel. The idea is not direct competition for conventional car rental firms, nor for car sharing schemes. He places Mu somewhere in between. Car sharing involves a monthly charge. And Mu doesn't. Customers only pay for what they actually use. With rental cars, they can only choose from regular vehicles. Mu, however, also offers cycles and motor scooters. Plus, there are also extra accessories on offer, like roof boxes, snow chains, and sat-nav systems. This young woman heard about the offer by chance and is interested. The Peugeot representative shows her how easy it is to open an account. All she needs is a credit card and a valid email address. 
And it's as simple as that. And of course, customers can sign on from the comfort of their own home as well. After seeing the range available, the new customer quickly plumps for the RCZ. The customer pays with points via her online account. The RCZ, for example, costs 500 points, equivalent to 100 euros a day. Peugeot Women gives the customer the car manual, plus an accident record form. Not that she's expecting anything to happen. The car's papers have to stay in the car while it's out on the road, but need to be returned to the representative. After getting some basic advice, the customer is free to get going. Bicycles, incidentally, cost as little as 25 points, or 5 euros per day. But she now has 24 full hours to enjoy the new RCZ. There's also the weekend option, lasting from Friday midday through Monday midday. 72 hours of mobility to dispose of exactly as you please. Peugeot's essential target group, says Alexander Zeidel, comprises city dwellers, private individuals who may not have their own car. They might complain about never finding a place to park while needing a vehicle to transport furniture. Or they might want to take their girlfriend away for the weekend, in a convertible, say. Or they might need the right car to take a trip to Hamburg or Munich with their family. They've got it all. Mühe by Peugeot is starting out with four offices in Berlin. The project was piloted in four French cities in the summer of 2009. Paris joined the network in February. Customers in Berlin can choose from 43 cars and vans, six motor scooters, eight bicycles, and two electric bikes. If the concept proves popular, other German cities will follow suit by the end of the year. Customers who need extra cargo capacity can also rent out a roof box. It's in keeping with Peugeot's eagerness to expand its horizons and be more than just a pure car maker. The idea behind Mu is to cover the entire spectrum of mobility options and requirements, also with an eye on the future. The Mu concept, explains Alexander Zeidel, creates a link between Peugeot as a car maker with regular vehicles and the new electromobility program. There's the new Ion, which they'll be getting at the end of the year. There'll be an electro scooter in the fall, and they already have the electric bike right now. People can try out these new arrivals. Drivet sees the opportunity to take the Ion out for a spin. It currently only comes with right-hand drive. But you get a pretty good impression of how city-style driving could feel in the near future. The car does a good job. It drives very smoothly. It's also compact and maneuverable, great for the urban conditions. And a range of 130 kilometers is fine for driving around the city. Plus, there's no jolting when changing gear. It's a smooth and silent shifter. Peugeot's new mobility concept sees it embarking on new territory, that of a mobility services provider. City drivers will decide whether Peugeot's plans take off. Audi has updated the engine range for the Q7 with three new V6s now available two petrol-driven units, and an all-new V6. All the engines combine turbocharging with direct injection. All six and eight-cylinder models can now also be ordered with a new eight-speed Tiptronic automatic transmission that, according to the car maker, lowers fuel consumption by 5%. Also due out soon is Renault's revamped Megane Coupe convertible, 
One of the highlights of the four-seater model is the split panoramic glass roof. It takes 21 seconds to turn the coupe into a convertible. The windscreen was brought forward 10 centimeters to increase that feeling of freedom and also make access easier. The McGain Coupe convertible will hit the market in June. Once upon a time, VW had a firm grip on the minibus segment, but that changed when the Mercedes Viano 2003 was introduced. We've tested it and found it's in no danger of being outdated. Today I'm going to drive the Mercedes Viano 2.0 CDI to see if it's fit for everyday use. The Viano performs well both during commercial and private use. What I've got here is a Mercedes automatic and I'm very satisfied with it, except perhaps with the kickdown, which lets the engine rev up pretty high before it actually shifts. An automatic transmission is only available on four-wheel drive models and costs a hefty 5,800 euros more than a standard transmission. Among the other optional extras is an electric glass sunroof. I really like the sunroof only when I get going faster than 80 kilometers per hour. The road noises get so loud that I've got to close it. And even though it's relatively small, the Mercedes Viano can get up to speeds in excess of 80 kilometers an hour pretty quickly. It can also sprint from zero to 100 in just 13 seconds. But the Viano isn't exactly a bargain. In Germany, it sells for about 50,000 euros. You can get the Viano with various seating configurations. I've got the seven-seater here. And for a seven-seater, the suspension is really much too stiff. You notice every bump and pothole, and after a while, it gets uncomfortable. But the vehicle does have self-regulating air suspension, which can automatically compensate for added loads of up to 565 kilograms. The exterior appearance is all Mercedes. The elegantly shaped vehicle is typical of the brand, as is the trademark star on the radiator grill. To make getting in and out convenient in tight parking spots, the side doors can be opened electrically at the touch of a remote control button. The seats that come with the comfort option are a bit too hard, but there's plenty of leg room and the seats can be adjusted with ease because they're on tracks. The seats swivel as well so that the passenger in the front can face people in the back. Using this lever you can adjust the back rests so you can recline or fold them forward in order to make getting out easier. And if you still can't fit through here, then you can use this lever to fold up the seat even further. The rear hatch, unfortunately, has to be opened and closed manually but the lower edge of the luggage compartment allows cargo to be moved in and out with ease. And there's no chance of the rear of the van becoming stuffy thanks to the flash power windows at the back. Bigger vehicles like this are often difficult to handle in everyday conditions, particularly when backing into tight parking spaces, but not the Viano. The big advantage of the Mercedes Viano is really good visibility. The seats are up high and there are windows on all sides. You can get into the narrowest of lanes or streets. 
That gets a bit more difficult if there are tall people sitting in the rear seats or the Viano is loaded to the roof of the luggage. Still, the Viano makes a good, solid impression, and its story will continue because the first prototypes of the latest model have already been seen on the streets. Estonia is one of the Baltic nations, and it's Sten Pentis' homeland. But he's not just any old Estonian. In the backwoods of the country, he trains as much as he possibly can with his buddy Peta. He's working hard to develop his career. It's a loud job, and one that has little to do with the tranquil Estonian countryside. Sten Pentus is a Renault Formula 3 driver. The man who comes from the cold north is dominating Grand Prix courses in sizzling Spain. Pentus is a natural who started driving a go-kart at 14 and beat Estonia's racing greats. Actually, there, there has been some uh, very famous uh, Estonian go-kart and racing drivers. Uh, and they knew the lap times and I went and I beat the lap times with the first time and I was first time in go-kart as well. So, and then they asked, are you racing? I said, no. And the guy said, you should then. And then I went straight home and I t told to my father, I, I, need, I need a co-guard, I want to start racing. But it takes more than talent to be successful. Hard work and a critical eye help too. His coach, Laurent, a Formula 3 driver, doesn't let Sten get away with much. I mean, he's only in his uh, second full season of, uh, of motorsport. As soon as one session is finished, I'm trying to give him straight away the advice for, for corner one or corner two or corner five, whatever. And uh, if it's uh, breaking later or entering the corner faster, it's a bit early to say that uh, we will be the favorite for the championship. I think we will be there for a top three finish. He's a sunny boy with a keen sense of fun, but who takes his work seriously nonetheless. Models, fashion, and money aren't really his thing. Because he had to, Sten took time out between two test sessions in Aragon to take part in a photo shoot. All this boy wants to do is drive fast. There's not much time for anything else. What I can see is only the circuits and the airports because I, I go to, for example, to Barcelona. I, uh, I, I land there, take the rental car, drive to the circuit, to the hotel, and uh, when the race weekend is over, I drive back to the airport and leave the country. So, unfortunately, I have uh, not enough time to visit the city. I think I have been in Barcelona circuit at least five times, but never been in the city. Sten uses music to counterbalance his life in the driver's seat. In addition to his racing career, he's producing his own tunes. Sten is always in step with the times. He's someone who takes life as it comes, as quickly and with as much intensity as he can, every day. I like to do everything I want to do as uh, early as possible. Not to wait until I'm maybe 60 years old and then, then start doing it. Better do it now and never know how long it's gonna be. And I try to live every day like it's my last day. Estonia's fastest son and currently the Baltic Republic's biggest motor racing hope is someone who lives to succeed without being extremely driven. Sten Pentus from Tallinn. He's a nice guy who's going to follow the road fast wherever it takes him. Thank you, that's it for now. See you at the racetrack. <laughs>